All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another one. Dad's already hooked up. We're gonna be fishing for some trout today on the river with the center pin reels, so stay tuned. Good run. Still haven't seen him. He's at least a pound and a half. Oh, there he is. It's not ready. Oh! I couldn't see him. Okay, let's get into it then. <clears throat> Running the same setup, 11 foot 3. Shimano Claris, got the float, 25 gram float, the half ounce egg sinker to a bead, protect my knot to the swivel, and I got this, uh, the snap swivels, make it easier to swap out on uh, some 10 pound tests, about two feet down to the bead, pegged, two and a half to three finger width away from the hook. This is, uh, I think it's a size four, barbless. This lake is quite restricted, so it's a bait ban and barbless, single barbless hook. And no retention of trout, it's all catch and release. Here you just travel hook to snack them. Yeah. Off. Yeah, with uh, I wrap the lead around it. Okay, first cast. Oh shit, I didn't even set my depth. <laughs> Whoops. I'm gonna sink right to the bottom if I do that. All right, let's try that again. I need a toothpick. So, a lot of people use bobber stops for this kind of float fishing, but we don't need to go that deep. And plus, because we have an 11 foot rod, we can get up to pretty much 11 feet or deeper just from pegging it at that height. So I don't need to use bobber stops. And plus, I usually use them, but every time I break off, I've been breaking off lately, I've been losing my whole setup. So I'm over it, I'm going old school and using the toothpick and the cheap. You don't have to use as many beads. Doesn't have to look like a tribal necklace off a of survivor or something like that. So all you do, don't mind the float either. That was a prank by my father. So you just shove the pick in there, like that, and just snap it. You can use the other side if you lose it. Saving wood, saving the trees. <laughs> Try it at that depth, four feet in total, two foot from the leader. Just cut gut man off. All right, first cast for real this time. Yeah, you do have me. Did you get that fish on the drift or on the retrieve? I just saw a fish jump out there. A little bit deeper. Dad must have spooked the hole. Oh, he's on. Oh shit, he's gonna go right in front of me. Oh yeah, nice jump. I hope I got that. Oh yeah, he's freaking out. Got a half decent one. It's two for him now and zero for me. You're way deep, aren't you? I need to go deeper. They don't like the dick float. That's a shame. All right. Oh, what do I got on there? Seaweed. I don't want seaweed as bait. Okay, we're fishing probably about nine feet now. Oh, 
Oh, that was something for sure. That was a weird bite. I couldn't tell what that was, but it was a fish. And then he, I didn't hook him, I don't think. And he, I could feel him spit it. Yeah, do it. You've been getting fish on it, so I don't know what it is. Might just be starting to slow down now. We didn't like that cold front. We just got a big cold front roll through and 10 inches, 12 inches of snow. And you come out here and there's barely any. Some up on the mountains. Damn. <laughs> yeah. We're hooked up. He drained it on the drift though. Feels pretty small. Really small. Just a little guy. Ooh, ooh. I think he saw me. No problemo. Oh, nice. Got the hook without me even having to do anything. Yeah. It's all banged up. We're on the board. Definitely a glove worthy day today. Starting to get cold. Like I said, it snowed a lot yesterday and uh, it's a bit warmer in this side of the area, but where I am, it gave her. Wade in the water there a bit and do a retrieve through the middle. Alrighty. It went under, definitely went under. Yep. Oh, did I get him? I think I set the hook too quick maybe. I don't know, but it went, I drained it for sure. So the reason why we're fishing so many uh, beads is uh, because every year the salmon come and spawn here, the sockeye salmon, and um, these trout come and feed off of them. And uh, they're all wild trout. That's why it's all catch and release because this is somewhat of a sanctuary for the salmon. And so they just gorge on these eggs, the salmon eggs, and pretty much everyone you catch is just stuffed full. And so that's why we try to get here for first light and fish the beads because all these trout are in here cranking the eggs in for the day. And then usually around eight or nine o'clock, it slows right down. And uh, yeah, they're full for the day. And they kind of come back and eat at nighttime, but we like to fish it for first light because that's the best time. Always go for first light. You won't regret it. I've been fishing hard now for about three years, almost three years, kind of, uh, all started in 2020 with uh, the pandemic and there's nothing else to do but come out here to the middle of nowhere where no one would bother you you didn't have to worry about being around anybody and you could just go fishing so that's what i did and now i'm in love with it all i do every weekend is try to go fishing especially in the fall and the spring what'd you switch up to the orange Dad's on the peach bead. See if it makes any difference. Well, I'm thinking of switching up too. I've been seeing them jump. Over in this tail out right in front of you. That's where they've all been jumping. Oh, right there. Damn, right in front of dad. Maybe I don't need to switch up. Oh, he's off. It's the thing with those uh, retrieve bites. It's hard to get the hook into them properly because you don't expect it and then next thing you know you're hooked up so if you don't set the hook quick enough or hard enough you're not gonna hook into them properly anyways let's switch up i like getting them on the drift better it's a way more fun way to do it but catching a fish is catching a fish so can't really complain just need to find my beads there we are so i think i'm gonna go with this orange colored one but the bigger size the 10 mil Yep, swivel. Okay. And guys, these are the trout beads. Um, you just get them on troutbeads.com with the trout hook. Need to get more hooks. But yeah, pinch the barb on those guys. Adds a little bit of challenge as well. This one's rigged up with six pound tests, I believe. And we got the 10, 10 mil. I don't think this is the peach one. This is more of like a sunburst orange. The pink peg. I like doing these orange ones with the pink peg instead of clear or orange. I don't know, I think it just adds a little bit of a variety to it. Maybe it makes them think it's the blood dot, but I believe it's a modeled, modeled row as well, but orange. Yeah, check them out. They're good beads. That far seam there, I hopped into it, but it went into the slow shit, and then I started reeling in, 
to get into this scene here and hit right in the slow crop. Why are you switching over to orange? You just caught one on red. Yeah, but on the retrieve, like, okay. Trying a bigger bead too, and I think it's slightly different than yours. Yours is more of the peachy colored. Mine's a bit more nectarine, darker orange, and a bigger bead. Let's see if they want the big snacks today. Tons of seagulls out over here. I don't know if you can see those, but there's like a hundred of them sitting there. They're all feeding on the eggs too. This is like a big winter stock up. Everybody's getting ready for the winter. Things are getting cold. Let's try to huck one way the hell over. Oh, yeah, see, I did. I did get a bite. My bead is at the bottom of my hook. And see, so the reason why I set them up like this, so when the fish takes it, he's not eating the hook, and the hook will go and hit him, and it'll go right into the outside of him, and uh, hook him in the corner of the mouth nine times out of 10. And so that's why I keep about two fingers distance from the hook to the peg. And then that way, because we're doing catch and release, you can, uh, fish doesn't get gilled, and they uh, have a better chance of making it out of the hook. I'm sitting right in that pocket there where there's no current. It's about to drift into the current now, I think. Just wait this one out and see if it drains. Reel it into the current a bit. Definitely one of the slower mornings. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's a nice one. It feels heavy. I told you that. That could drop off of me. <sighs> feels like a good one. Oh, no. No way. That one actually had some weight to it. I'm going to go to that side. Oh, that sucks. Damn. Try it again. Dad's taking off to the other side. Ah, oh, that sucks. I've yet to catch a ha actual half decent fish out of here. Like right at the beginning of the spawn, I caught like a three pounder. That one was half decent. It was a good fight on this rod, that's for sure. Had me bent right over. We're hunting for the big ones. There's potential for 10 pounders out here. This is a big lake. One of the bigger ones. Ooh, Ooh. right at the... Oh, just a baby again. Ooh, he's freaking right out. <laughs> Getting some good jumps out of him. <laughs> this guy's freaking out. It's fun, like this strain of trout. I'm not sure what it is. Dad, do you know what? the trout strain is? It says Summer Gerards and yeah, I'm not sure either. I'd have, to, I'd have to look into them. Maybe like Fraser Valley, but they're wild. That's all I know. Um, this lake system runs straight into the ocean on the west coast. We're in the west coast of Canada, British Columbia. Yeah, they're strong fish. They're healthy, they're strong. It's another reason why it's uh, all catch and release. This lake is very strict. You need a tag for any retention. Uh, you only get five a year, one a day, over, uh, have to be over 50 centimeters. No baits, like I said earlier, single barbless hook everywhere on the lake. Strict, but it's how you keep a good population of uh, healthy trout like this. And um, unfortunately, there used to be steelhead and uh, they all got wiped out, the Thompson, Thompson Valley, Thompson River steelhead. They all got wiped out from commercial fishing and uh, this is part of the effort to just pop right out. Part of the effort to keep these fishery healthy. Nice little guy, he's got like a burn mark on him it looks like. There he goes. Well, let's see if I can get that big guy back because I want him. The wind's coming in. Good thing is coming from behind me. Sorry if the audio is crap. I don't have a mic hooked up because this is an old GoPro and the battery dies very quickly. I don't have extra batteries for it, but it's hooked up to a power bank right now. And it is not warm out here. It's probably like it's either zero or in the minuses because it's freezing. First time I've had to actually like keep gloves on while I'm fishing this year. Back in September, like it's the beginning of November right now, but back in September when I was fishing for salmon, those videos will be coming next year, but it was freezing. Like September was pretty warm and then it just dropped off into freezing cold weather. And I had to wear gloves then, so it's the only other time this year. And then it warmed right back up. It was sitting at like, we were having like 20 degree days all September pretty much. Whatever those guys are using, there's some fly guys over. There's a seam that's way over to the left from here. But whatever those guys are using, they're catching them. Well, maybe I'll chuck the muddler out on the fly rod and see if they're uh, interested in that. Or I got a spinner. Got options here. It's 
so let's switch it up and see if we can get hooked up. Alright everybody, so switching up to the fly rod, the medium sink on it, the Fenwick Eagle. Five weight, moderate fast, nine foot with uh, down to about a five foot leader and to a uh, snap swivel bead headed muddler. These things kill it out here. And what I like to do with it is just kind of unconventional, but it works, is loosen my drag right up, get it out in the current, just let it the current drag it out oh we got a loon yeah I just let the current drag this thing out feel any hits along the way set the hook probably gonna go for my muddler and I just go until I let out all my fly line go a bit into the backing and I wait out into the current like this so that I can stay in it. This, this is the seam, right? Want to be in that when you're reeling it in. Yeah, that'd be crazy. That's talking about accidentally hooking into the loon. I tighten my drag back up and then uh, start slowly reeling it in and let's see if we get one. This was working well last week and I know that, but that was later in the day so we'll see. This rod is fun when you catch a good fish on it. In my opinion, the lighter weight rod, the better. It's more fun. And if you do catch a big one, then better know how to fight. But around here, the chances of getting a huge one is pretty rare. So it's fun just to have this for the all the fish in between. Your average fish is about a pound, two pounds. So no luck on that drift. Gonna kind of come on the side of the current now in the tail out area and see. Sun's about to pop over the edge. So they might like going out after the lures. Nice and shiny. Might have to get the spinner out. Ooh, that was a trout right there. Maybe he'll want my muddler. Another trout right there. As soon as dad leaves, <laughs> they start jumping. Well, let's try just doing a couple strips through here maybe. Switch to a spinner. Auga, that wind is cold. We got some sunshine coming to warm us up. It's gonna be good. Oh dear. Oh, oh there we go. Oh really? Maybe not. What has happened? Let's try again. Oh, there it goes. All right. Oh, just as the sun comes out, we got the Okuma Celio. This is a six foot six, two to six pound ultralight. This thing is fun. Paired with an Okuma Kaimar, uh, I think this is a thousand series. Yeah, C10. It's a good reel too. This thing, this reel casts super far. I got eight pound, uh, or I think it's 10 pound braid spooled on here. Cause it doesn't take much much uh, line obviously because it's such a small reel. Got that tied to a swivel so that my line twist is a little bit more chill. And that's tied to 10 pound with a couple split shots to get it down in the current to my number six Panther Martin. Gold baby. This is the one. This thing kills it with the orange tail. If you guys are spinner fishermen or women, you know what I'm talking about. Look at this. Absolutely beautiful. So 
this is what a lot of people don't understand about fishing or just being outdoors in general is this is why I do it not to catch fish obviously to you want to get that nice fish and you know check those boxes on your list of things but this is why like look at this this is serenity this is where you can go to forget about everything it's therapy where you can go to have all the problems in your life melt away for a couple hours while you fish hang out with people you love You want to go to the seam? Dad wants to walk upriver. I'm down. Do a couple casts through here and see if we can get one on the spinner. Now that it's bright out like this, they might like it. Flashy. Oh. What was that? It was something. Didn't take it. Whatever it was. Fun thing about spinners too is if a, if a fish hits it, they hammer it one. Oh, another hit. Something's down there whacking into this thing. They don't like it. These trout are pretty aggressive too. This one sink a little bit. Ooh, that was a good hit. That was a hit for sure. Come back. I'm getting taps every single cast, so one of these times it's gonna hook up. Just hope it's a massive one. Oh, dad's on. He's on the crock, I think. He says it's a beefcake. It looks half decent. Yeah, that's a good size. Better than the ones we've been catching on these beads, that's for sure. Maybe I'll switch to a crock too. Why not? Quite slow today though, wow. He's got one on the silver, so do I got a blue and silver? Yeah, there we go. Blue and silver, this one's come in handy for me, I know that. Same lure has caught a lot of fish. One eighth ounce Gibbs, blue stripe. Yeah, it's beat up, but they like it like that. Guess we'll find out for sure. Those guys are slaying them over there. Oh, we're hooked up. We're hooked up. It's a small one, whatever it is. Look at the head shakes though. Oh! Did he spit it? He spit it. No! Croc! He was tiny. He had no head shakes to him. Give us one more cast. Alright, try the bead then. Tough fishing today. Not gonna lie. We're getting bites and we're getting hookups, but nothing really big and uh, nothing. Like it's kind of few and far in between. Get some shades out here. Should we go up to the seam or what? You gotta come get me. We're gonna move, moving spot. Go in river and see what we can get. All right, so we're gonna go check out the interior of the river now. So we're getting all suited up and ready to go. Get you guys in there. Scratch that, dad wanted to fish the seam. He just bruised nested himself and he missed the bobber down. Still doing it. I had a bird's nest before I even started. That's why I wanted to hock out there. Let's give him this little thing to go. Oh, it's the bottom. That looks like a bobber down for sure. Something's in there. There is sockeye in there, I see that. Go a bit further, like right past that tree. Oh, he's on. Oh, he came off. Yeah, that's a good sign. Well, then maybe there might be something up river. Tried one more cast and he got him.
these fish. Oh. <laughs> the dick floats on me, Gary. Up river we go, finally. Maybe. I guess we'll find out. I know, because that's usually a pretty crap scene. I've caught a few there. I've had like three on and caught two there now. I'm sure there's there's wolves that hang around here. A wolf? Oh yeah. Big. Tall. Well like where were like you? Cam, how Cam was? Like body? With longer legs, even the one I see. For you guys, Cam was our husky Malamute dog, big, big dog. You gotta stick. <laughs> you can do it. Oh. Huh? A seagull. Oh, it's definitely slippery. Well, oh, I'm sticking in the sunshine. Coming up in those mountains up there. Lots of snow. It's only a few hundred feet above us too. Start with the bead as usual. Holy wind. That's hooked up. Got nice spots on them. Probably like two.
Give it a kiss, Cody. I'll Thank kiss you. it. <laughs> That's a good six or seven pounds. That's my best trout in the year. Nice. Woo! So good job. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. If you made it this far in the video, just want to give my dad a big shout out because he makes the trips really fun and he's funny to be around in general. So hope you guys liked it. Keep watching, subscribe, like the video because there's more to come. All right, guys, let's grow this channel. Let's do it.